Hello there. Uh, my name's Dan. I like talking about Warhammer the Old World. We're going to be talking, as is traditional for me, I suppose, on Mondays, about some tournaments. We've had four that meet uh, my entry criteria. So I've also very nearly finished doing a uh, PhD uh, where there's quite a bit of stats involved. Um, it's it's a complicated subject. Um, uh, but anyway, I'm, I'm, I like doing stats. I'm good with numbers. Um, so what I'm doing is presenting the stats. As I've said every single time, there's not really enough stats to draw any like firm conclusions at the moment. However, as the data starts to build, we get a bit of a better picture as to um, as to what's going on. But we need the game, the stats to show a stable game state before we can say that. Um, before we can say that something is definitively good or bad. Although there are early signs saying that some factions tend to be doing better. Anyway, so we'll start off with Battle Brothers, 10 entrants, Garrett Stacy won. This is quite a small tournament. It's just on the, so my entry criteria are three games or more, 750 to 2500 points limit, and uh, 10 entrants. Um, so, uh, Garrett managed to win with Ogres. He's got a Bruiser. He's got a Slaughter Master. Which has Kin Eater. That's a... Okay, so he's not spent a lot on characters, actually. He's got a Bruiser, who's the Battle Standard Bearer with a bit of defensive stuff and then he's got a slaughter master with a cauldron and a lot of stuff and then he's got some iron guts for core quite a big unit of 12 of them with the great weapons and the rampaging banner that's uh that is that reroll charges or something um and then he's got oh oh no I keep clicking on the wrong thing. Go away, word. Right. Uh, yeah, I'll just quickly get the ogre book up and see what the rampaging banner does. He's got some a very small unit of ogre bulls to, I think, fill out. I'm not sure what they're there for, actually, to be honest. Just three bulls. Uh, 11 iron guts. Presumably the bruiser goes in there. And he's got the dragon hide banner. So he's clearly loading something into those iron guts. Like the iron guts are... He's got a stone horn rider and a two iron blasters. I think iron blasters are pretty good. And then he's got some sabre tusk packs with, with Vanguard for some, like, pre-game movement shenanigans. Right. So... What do these banners do? That's the that's the question, isn't it? He's got Dragonhide Banner, reroll any hit rolls of one, and Flaming for 45 points. That's pretty good. What was the other one? It was uh, the Rampaging Banner, which is from the core army book. So Rampaging Banner. I'll just quickly find the magic items. Magic items... Ugh, magic standards. Rampaging banner. You may reroll charge rolls. Okay, so that was so that was reroll charge rolls, and uh, this one. <coughs> pardon me. And he's got some some. I think I'm. Although I saw an ogre play at the weekend who taken an iron blaster and he said it did absolutely nothing for him all weekend. Maybe the answers too. I don't know. I don't know. Let's have a quick look at what it does. This is your Iron Blaster. It can either be a strengthful AP1 breath weapon, or alternately, it can be a 36 inch range cannon, which is strength 10 and AP3. And, um, <coughs> apologies, sorry, I keep getting told off for drinking things. I'm just very thirsty. Um, and it's about as good as a great. In fact, it's basically as good as a great cannon, isn't it? So, 
it's just a short range great can i mean i think for 185 points you're paying 85 points effectively for a rhinox so like you know i just think it's really good and it's got first charge and it's close order yeah, the Rhinox has got three armor bane, strength five attacks. It does D6 plus one impact hits. You know, it's it's a large target, so it can see over other troops. So, you know, you can put it behind your ogres, and it can keep blasting away as you're closing with the enemy. It's just really super good. Um, and you can kind of shoot it in combat if they've got characters hiding. Oh, no, you can't, can you? No, scratch that. But yeah, I just think they're really good. I actually quite like uh, the scrap launchers as well, because you know it's the um, it's the five inch blast template, strength three, AP nothing, which is all right. Multiple wounds two is the model under the middle, but still, like it hits a load of models and it does a lot of potentially a lot of you know a lot of wounds. So I quite like that. Especially this is good for skirmishes as well. So, yeah, and then you've got some Sabre Tusk. Sabre Tusk packs are pretty rubbish, but um, in terms of their profile, there's not they haven't got a lot of output, is what I'm trying to say. But movement 8 means they can move 8, and that means they can effectively charge 17. So you can get a 1 with the Vanguard. You can get a, you know, if you're 24 inches away, well, actually, 17 plus 8 is 25. So if somebody's put stuff on the line, you can get a first turn charge off with them. And, you know, toughness 4, they're no slouch. Although arguably Scouts is better than Vanguard, isn't it? Because you can definitely get your first turn charge off. So I don't know. And they've got move through cover as well. So um, they get to reroll dangerous terrain checks. So you can put them in cover. And the skirmish, so you can put them in cover. So they're fully in cover. So they're basically minus three to hit. Um, you know, uh, even if somebody stands and shoots, they're like minus, what would that be? Minus four to hit. Because minus one for skirmish, minus two for heavy cover, minus another one for stand and shoot. So, you know, you could get a decent first turn charge off with those guys. Um, into something, you know, archery, that kind of thing. And it might do some damage, don't know. So they're, mm, I think they're, they're actually surprisingly good. So, yeah, I quite like that list. That's quite interesting. So he's got the Sabertoss to do interesting, annoying things. But he's only he's gone for Vanguard, not Scouts. That's the that's the main thing. Um, so he, he's not done that. Uh, but, yeah, two Iron Blasters, really, really nice. Two, two great cannons, like just half-range great cannons. Excellent. And then he's got a Stonehorn right. I think Stonehorns and Thunder Tusks are best with Riders rather than... This is the, definitely the right choice for Ogres. Characters on foot, definitely the right choice. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So that's good. So that's Battle Brothers. I'm not surprised that one did quite well. Um, what out of here could have beaten that? I think Dark Hells have got an option to beat that kind of thing. It depends on what everybody else has taken. Yeah, which else are awful at the moment? Um, it's got a th yeah, re repeat bolt throws just miss. That's the rules, you know. You've got to hypothetically be good at hitting, but actually you, you must roll the dice and they miss every time. So that's Battle Brothers Wargaming, April Tiawu, 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 The Old World RTT, uh, which was uh, hosted by uh, Colin McLean um, and Sam Schaffer. Uh, and that was held in Ohio in the US. So well done. Good tournament. That's their first tournament. I uh, hope everybody had fun. Then we have Ancient Evils, which was run by Tom Mepham in uh, England. <laughs> um, HB11. HB11 to Ag. In High Wycombe. In High Wycombe. In fact, round about here somewhere, it was held in this little zone here somewhere. There's a, there's a shop that does Warhammers. And uh, this tournament was held there, 37 High Street. 37 High Street. It was held precisely there, Tabletop Republic. That sounds likely, doesn't it? Can we have a little man? 
ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba 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 -ba. It was held. Oh, then that says Smiths. Was it that? Is that tabletop? I don't know. That definitely says Smiths there. Maybe Smiths is gone. Maybe it's lying to us. Tabletop Republic. It's in there somewhere. Oh, this is exciting, isn't it? Where the hell is it? Is it down that little passage right there? Is that, or do you have to go around the back there? Is that what happens? Is, is it over? Is it? Is it next to Joyce's Boxing Club? I'm getting too into this. Stop that. Right. <laughs> um. <laughs> oh, I'm going to have to start doing that now. I'll just find out where things are. Where do you park, actually? That is must be such a nightmare to get to. Hold on. See if we can find it. So it's in here. I bet it's up there, isn't it? It's in there somewhere. It's above the Smiths. So I wonder if you have to... I bet it is down here, isn't it? Eagle paving, out of my way. Come along. No, we're limited. Oh, no, we're not. Oh, bins. Hello, bins. No parking or waiting next to the... That's the back entrance for Smith's. Is it... How the hell do you get to Tabletop Republic? There's Wickham Swan Theatre and Car Park. Ah, there'll be a car park in here, won't there? Can I rotate the thing? Oof, oof. I wonder if it's like... I bet it's like you have to go around here or something. Yeah, there's a solicitor's hidden around the back there, isn't there? I bet it's somewhere you have to... I wonder if it is that little... Anyway, right. Um, Ancient Evils was, was held in somewhere near the Smiths in High Wycombe. Um, Sam Wrightson and, and Diego Delgado uh, came bottom, and I have had some requests to have a look at uh, some lists that perhaps didn't do so well. Uh, just to see what we can learn from that. The main takeaway from Ancient Evils is, though, that somebody with Skaven not only managed to win one game, they also managed to win the other two, which is incredible. But anyway, let's start with the Warriors of Chaos that didn't do so well. I have seen this list, actually, already, and I'll tell you the problem. He's gone all Zinch, and Zinch is possibly the worst mark out of all of them. It works for a Sorcerer Lord... Uh, because you, it, the, the magic missile that the Zinch Sorcerer Lord gets is fan-flipping-tastic. It's brilliant. Um, D6 plus 3, strength 4, AP 2, 18-inch range is the key stat there. So it's got a decent range, it's got a decent strength, it's got a high number of hits and a high AP. It's very good. And it only casts on a 9, so it's reasonably reliable as well. Um He's gone for a BSB with a war banner, and it's an exalted champion, which is, I mean, okay. Then he's only got chaos warriors are a bit rubbish. Um, heavy armor shields and just hand weapons. You need great weapons, really. Great weapons and corn, I think, are the way to go if you're just going to stick with warriors. Um, then you've got some, I mean, great weapons. Can you take great weapons and shields? I can't remember. If you can take great weapons and shields, that's probably the way to go. Chosen Knights are just a bit too expensive. And Mark of Zinch, you know, this is a very... Spawn, I think, are pretty good, actually. Um, I think they could they could be... Because they've got scaly skin, so they've got heavy armor. I think they've got a ward as well. They're toughness five, which means they're actually quite difficult to wound. And they've got three wounds. So, you know, I think, I think Spawn are pretty good. You've just got to be able to throw them around with Demonology. So they are infantry, the monstrous infantry, so you can make them fly 12. So if you take two in a unit, you can deploy them in marching column and then do 36-inch chuck two spawn up the end of the table sort of thing. Um, they can't charge next turn, but then your opponent's got six strength, toughness, sorry, six toughness, five wounds to worry about, probably right next to his, you know, cool stuff or just about to hit him in the rear because he doesn't want to turn around because, you know, whatever. Um, actually, it doesn't matter. Oh, that's so clever, isn't it? Because if you got two, because they have, they move randomly, it doesn't matter that they're in marching column. They'd still end up in combat, wouldn't they? There must be skirmishes. There must be skirmishes that would stop that. But anyway, you can still uh, punt them up the table twenty four inches. 
by putting them on Steed of Shadows, which would also be quite worrying. <laughs> just to sort of just appear in front of you. Um, so maybe he's doing that, I don't know. But other than that, it's not... Chosen Knights aren't actually... I don't think they're worth the points. I think they're very expensive. Um, I think Knights are just like... I know other, pe- other opinions exist. I think Knights are just about worth their points because they're relatively cheap relative to Chosen. But... <laughs> Chosen knights and chosen and and just knights die quite quickly. So I find anyway, it's the toughness four that's the main thing that keeps them alive. Really, okay. Then this high elf list didn't do very well. He's got an archmage for five hundred points on a phoenix. Oh, phoenix are rubbish. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. Lots of magic, some cheap. I don't think he's not got enough core units. You need 500 points of core in a 2000 point list. Hmm, not sure. Not sure what's going on there with that list. Two sword masters of hearth, they're good, but die quite quickly because they've only got heavy armor. Um, I mean. Line chariots are okay, but quite expensive for what they are. Um, if they had swift stride, they'd be worth that much points, but they don't. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, there's, there's, you, you just, I, you can just, I think opponents would just chew through it. That's the problem. Like, it's a, it's a load of stuff that's good on paper, but once you actually put all, all of this on the tabletop, right? It's just, people are just going to munch through it unit after unit after unit. Despite the fact that Sword Masters, you know, Sword, that's the only thing that's going to be any good. But people will just hit it with like magic attacks and AP2 shooting and impact hits and all that kind of stuff. So they don't have to deal with it in combat. So, yeah, I mean, I can't, I can't see that's, that's going to really, that, well, I obviously did really struggle. It's a load of stuff that's good on paper, and I hope it. I hope, I hope when the high elf book comes out, they do something to make them good because they're really difficult to wield at the moment. The answer is basically a prince on a dragon, and that's the only thing that makes any high elf list any good is having a really horrible, like dragon princey sort of prince on a dragon sort of thing, with like five up regen, five up ward, you know, two up save, and that's you know. But even then, that can get. Um, combat resed off so yeah anyway we had dwarfs and skaven winning so let's have a look at the dwarf list that won all three games he's got three runes of shielding three runes of fury on shield bearers full plates he's got four up save four up ward like three extra attacks he's got a great weapon I thought there were in the rules you can only put runes on normal hand weapons is what somebody was saying but it could be the case that you could put it on uh, other weapons. I mean, it used to be the case that you could... Where's my good guys book? Good guys, good guys. Deledy, deedy. Dwarves. Uh, let's have a look at the runic items. Now, it says simply choose the room to remember to add the cost of each room. If you wish to inscribe. Yeah, hand weapon or great weapon. Yeah, so you can do that. Somebody told me you couldn't. Oh well. So yeah, that makes sense. So he's got like six attacks with a great weapon that's now magical. Um, And four, four up, six wounds. That seems pretty good for 400, 309 points. And then you got a Demon Slayer, which I th- Demon Slayers I think are interesting. I'm not sure. I mean, I well, I'd love to know if he's watching or if somebody can get him to have a look at this and comment down below how he used that old um, 
the whole the whole Slayer thing because like uh, where is it? Yeah, Demon Slayer. Yeah, it's three wins, toughness five. So relatively, but like you know, De- Demon Slayer has uh, killing blow. Doesn't have Monster Slayer, but does have uh, always wins on four. Uh, Behemoth take multiple wounds D three against him. He's presumably got a great weapon. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't know. I, it just doesn't seem that good. That's the that's the problem. There's just not the. It probably needs monster, monster slayer as well, or the demon slayer does at least. Anyway. So yeah, I'd love to know how you managed to get best value out of that two hundred and twenty points. Um, arguably another 12 long beards might be better uh, and he's got runesmith which you know the, the two dwarf lists I played at the weekend both had the anvil I think that's a waste of points I just don't see it being any good um, that looks cool um, you know being able to move your runesmith around obviously is a good thing Long beards, dwarf warriors, rangers, slayers, grudge, grudge throwers. Like people are saying, grudge throwers and gyrocopters. They seem to be. They seem to be uh, the answer. Uh, stone thrower. It's just a stone thrower. Not grudge thrower. Sorry, was it grudge thrower or was it, or was it the the funny axe thing? Huh. No, it's the Slayer War Machine. People are saying is good, but it's not out yet. So obviously nobody knows the rules, do they? Of course. Um, but yeah, Gyrocopters, a couple of stone throwers. I'm not sure what makes that so good, really. But he's got 20 Slayers, I suppose. Oh, idiot. He's put the Demon Slayer in the Slayers because they've all got Loner, haven't they? So he's got a big block of, like, 21 Slayers. I don't know why Slayers don't have, like... Do, or I, I was just about to say they don't have a ward save, but maybe they do. Bum, 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 bum. No, they've got <laughs> the magic resistance team. Oh, good. And they always wound on a wound roll of four up. So, great weapon essentially upgrades their AP to two. Huh. Hmm. I suppose they're unbreakable as well, but the toughness four, no armor. Like, yeah, maybe. Um, and then we've got this Skaven list. So it's got Gracia, Screaming Bell, with the Fell Blade, and there we go. There we go. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to the Fell Blade. It is the nastiest thing, nastiest weapon in all of Warhammer. Hands down. Like, go away. I don't care what's new. Um... <laughs> It's like this. It's 100 points. It has multiple wounds, D3. Magical attacks. Strength 10. No armor, ward, or regen saves are permitted. However, during the command sub phase, the wield of the fell blade must roll a D6 and a 1. They lose a single wound. Illusion. What does Illusion have in it? Illusion has spectral doppelganger in it, which says the following... A single enemy unit, the caster is engaged in cut. So it's 2d6 hits resolved using the character. This is an assailment cast on a 9. So 2d6, strength 10, multiple wounds, d3 hits with no armor, ward, or range. <laughs> like, perfect. Well done. You've, you've, somebody understood the assignment. That's worth 500 points. Apps are freaking lootly. Brilliant. Yep, yeah, very good. Um, that's something to be scared of. Uh, that'll just get pushed around by clan rats. The weird thing is, like, um, the uh, the Screaming Bell and uh, 
plague furnace is that they get pushed around by other units okay so they have to have other units to kind of push them around and push them into combat they don't accompany they're not like models that sit in units they just get shoved around by other units i think they can move around a little bit off their own steam but not quite so well uh Screaming bell. Yeah, it's got a move of two. Where's the... It's got... Oh, dragged along. That's the rule. Dragged along. So it's a, it's a Skaven special rule. An SSR as opposed to a USR. Dragged along. Where the hell's dragged along? Oh, I bet it's under a bloody war scroll, isn't it? It's not under war scroll. I bet it's under... It's not only under play core clap hold, is it? It's gonna be under maybe it's under the furnace. Why the hell's the rules for dragged along? Oh Is that a USR? Oh I can't find Drag De Long, obviously. Oh, it must be a USR. Didn't know that. Yes, it is it's a USR. Drag De Long, the model with this with begins, it's, it's to uh, replace its movement characteristic with that of the unit. And contains 10 models of yours. No. So as long as there's a unit of Skaven nearby, basically the Plague Furnace that's got 10 or more models in. The Plague... Okay. Yeah. Oh, no. Because he's got... He's only got five gutter runners, so he's basically reliant on clan runners. Why don't he take more gutter runners? Because then the gutter runners could drag it along and give it a movement of six. That would be cool, wouldn't it? Uh... What move do... Yeah, normal clan runs have move five. So it's going to be coming at you fairly quickly, but not massively. And then he's got 40 clan rats with a rattling gun and another rattling gun. Rattling guns are great, actually. I think they're possibly the best out of the weapons teams, but the others are pretty cool too. And then he's got a couple of hell pits uh, just to just cause problems because they're pretty nasty. Um, so yeah, he's got a lot of interesting nasty stuff there. Um, yes, and he's got a uh, plague furnace with talisman of protection with battle magic. Don't know why that's there, but anyway, that's a that's a very good list. Like this fell blade illusion combo, Mwah. chef's kiss. Right, so that's ancient evils. Well done, Marcin Garbino, and well done, James Martin of Armageddon Incorporated. Square-based GT. No, let's do that one last. Um, uh, this one is over at Just Play Games uh, in L22SB. L22SB over in Tithe Barn Street in uh, in Liverpool, which is there. There's a. I remember the last time I was here, I stayed in that hotel there, Premier Inn, Moorlands. So it's just down the street. And here is Just Play Games. Uh, it's a pretty okay venue. There's um, there's quite a big space down here. And there's quite a decent space at the top, at the back. You're at the back at the top. So you kind of go up some stairs there. And there's a room at the back in here. However, the room at the back at the top is really, really sweaty and hot. So you don't want to go at the back of the top and that's where the bottom tables are burr circular uh there's a car park around here somewhere um that car park i'm not sure whether that's still there kitty's show bar is a really nice bar there's an irish bar here which is open at lunch times so there's plenty of entertainment around here it is called shenanigans i think still um but yeah liverpool's actually a pretty nice city to go out in uh, at night in general there's lots of cool stuff like over this way and towards the city centre, towards the cathedral. So yeah, there's lots of there's lots of cool stuff around Liverpool. But anyway, 
the old world tournament. Uh, they had how many? Oh, one person dropped James Hampson. So top of the pops is uh, Matt McDonnell with Chaos Dwarves. Not surprised. Chaos Dwarves are quite good. Dwarves got second. So to all these people out there that say dwarves are crap, they're not crap. It's just the lists need refining. Like we don't know what works with dwarves yet. And I think when they get their book, they'll be much better. It's just ve they're very difficult to wield because you can't do you can't play them like you play any other faction. Demons of Chaos came bottom, which I'm very interested in because I want to have a go at demons next time I go to a thing. I just don't quite. I've got like eight thousand points or more, loads of points of demons. So, and I'd like to keep them for forty k and AOS as well. So I don't really want to rebase them. So it might be one that I have to buy, but don't tell the missus. Right, that was the dog trying to get in when I said don't tell the missus, that was ironic. And then Bretonia, uh, yeah, I don't even want to look at those. Okay, so the, oh, mm, mm. Ah, I went for Dark Magic. Yeah, you'd go for Illusion, I think, for that. Or, or Demonology to buff it up. And then a Herald, maybe for, you know, um, for Dark Magic to cast the Hatred. Uh, and uh, oh yeah you can't take this is the problem with demons they can't take normal magic weapons they can only take the stuff that's in their the stuff that's in their book they can't actually have magic items they can only have like demonic was uh and they're god specific as well so let's have a look at what he's gone for here this is disappointing actually because this is the one that i slanish is the way i wanted to go and this is pretty similar to the list that I was going to take. So, <laughs> thanks, Sean. <laughs> You've saved me some money. Um, so, you've got Keeper of Secrets, uh, level 4 Jedi, obviously. Many Arms, giving it an extra attack with the Impaling Claws. The Impaling Claws are pretty good. He's not... He's just giving it Many Arms, which, which... That is just an extra attack, isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it? Come on. Plus one, yeah, plus one attack for 55 points, though. It's just quite expensive. Um, I'll find its weapon profile and let you have a... The, annoyingly, the Soul Grinder is actually really good. Um, just very expensive, so I'm not sure it's worth its points, but it is very good. Uh, so here we go. So six... Uh, strength 6, AP 2, Killing Blow and Strike First attacks. You know, that's really, really super good. Especially if you've given it Illusion and you've given it and you've somehow hopefully managed to roll Spectral Doppelganger, which means you get 2d6, Strength 6, AP 2 hits, Striking First. So... Greater Demon, you know, really, really good. There's nothing that allows you to pick your uh, spells, though. That's the that's the problem. Um, I mean, Ether Blade, Aether Blade, sorry, is pretty good. No armor saves, so AP infinite, which is okay. Um, Winged Horror, I think, is really good for Keeper. Because I'm not sure... Oh, it does have Swift Stride already, doesn't it? I'm pretty sure. Now I've said that, I'm pretty sure it's got Swift Stride already. It's a while since I read this, but I'm pretty certain it's got Swift Stride. Where the bloody hell is it? This book is so long. That's the Herald. Here we go. Yeah, it's got Swift Stride. Lots of stuff in Slanesh. It's got Swift Stride, for obvious reasons. Yeah, so, I mean, I don't know. And then you've got uh, Soporific Musk on uh, Locus with, in a chariot. I mean, yeah. And then some Demonets. So, I, yeah, I can see that just dying, really. As good as the Soul Grinder is, like, it's not... It's not game changingly good, and it is two hundred and fifty-five. Oh, he's upgraded one of the weapon. I oh, was giving it a mark of slanesh, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah. So it's toughness six. It's got six wounds. It's got this harvester cannon thing, which is uh, range twelve, strength four, AP one. Um, 
and it has a special rule calling needs more nails or something. Yeah, whatever. Um, uh, what was the cool thing? Oh, yeah, it's got warp gaze. Has this one got warp gaze? No. It's just got the harvester cannon and the iron claw. I mean, oh, my God. So it's got this thing called warp gaze for another 30 points, which is basically a, a bolt thrower that's AP3. So it's got through and through, multiple wounds 2, strength 6, AP3, range 48. But that is pretty pretty darn good um but it's not it's not worth 265 well in fact that would be 295 points so that's not worth 300 points um but then again it does have reserve move so it can basically it can not move shoot its bolt thrower without a move and shoot penalty and then move afterwards um you know which is which is really good um, and it's got D6 plus one stomps, and so obviously because it's a large target, they're thunder stomps. So to be honest, like soul grinders, I think I think there's a there's a lot that they can do, but they are expensive. So you know, you yeah, you got to really maximise them. Then you've got Kevin Bromley uh, with dwarfs. Dwarfs did these do well or badly? These came second over in Liverpool. Liverpool. So I don't know why I said that twice. Um so you got an anvil of doom. Okay, an anvil I thought was rubbish, but he seems to have done something with it. What is the Master Rune of Calm? That's the that's the question, isn't it? What is the Master Rune of Calm? What the hell is it? Is it is it a armor rune? Ah another bound spell. Enemy wizards within 18 must increase that spell's casting value by 2. If this bound spell is cast with 11, must... Within 36? Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. Now, that is interesting, actually. I'd not thought of that, actually. However, if it's still, it basically sends out a 36-inch aura and more or less everything increases the spell's casting value by 2. So it's not the casting roll is reduced by two, which would be better, because then it'd be easier to dispel. Um, but it increases, so it reduces the likelihood of casting. So essentially it just reduces the magic level of wizards within um, normally 18 inches, but occasionally 36. So that's very, that's interesting. That's interesting. And then you've got a Thane. Um, yeah, I guess that's okay. Rune of Battle and Rune of Fear. <sighs> Which gives himself and his unit fear. And the Rune of Battle gives him plus one to combat res. Two runes of shielding gives him a five at ward. The General's the Anvil. Uh, which does because it's worth 405 victory points effectively so that does incentivize people to go over to him doesn't it and then the runesmith 92 quarrelers uh, rangers are very good 8 not enough um, 30 warriors yeah whatever great weapons he's got some iron breakers with rune of battle and he's got rune of confusion on his hammerers uh, e confusion that's the one that stops you getting initiative bonuses on the charge confusion make a disordered charge yeah so they don't get an initiative bonus which is pretty good for hammerers because hammerers are initiative four i think when they get charged so if you turn off your opponent's initiative bonus actually quite a lot of the time you're going to be striking first um and hammerers are nuts. They're horrible. Really horrible. Like Armour Bane 3 and AP 2 is just ridiculous. Um, sorry, Armour Bane 2 and AP 2. So, they're, you know, when you roll a 6 to win, they're, they're AP 4. It's just horrible. He's taking a cannon. I think cannons are good still. I think people are down on them unnecessarily. I think they're pretty good. Um, gyrocopters with clatter guns. That seems to, clatter guns seem to be quite popular. Organ gun. 
I, mean, I quite like the organ gun. I think it's quite effective. I like all the war machines, actually. There's not one that I don't like, like even a bolt thrower. Um, you probably need two, because one, if you take one, it just always misses. But um, And then winning this tournament is Mac McDonald with his Chaos Dwarves. He's got a Seneschal, he's got a Demon Smith, he's got a Hobgoblin Khan, he's got a Castellan, who's <coughs> going to be the general. That's interesting. I thought you'd have made the like the level four wizard. He hasn't got a level four wizard. And he won a tournament without a level four wizard. Oh, very interesting. He's got how many of these bloody iron demons? One. He's got a death streak of rocket launchers. So he has got a land trait. Oh, no, he's got two. Yeah, <laughs> of course. He's got... <laughs> they're just... Iron demons are just nasty. They're just... Oh. Chorfs, you know, just you lucky, lucky, lucky buggers getting such good rules on possibly your coolest models. Um, you know, people think the steam tank is cool. Wait until they see an Iron Demon. You're, you're soon going to be converting over to Chaos Dwarves. Now, I can't find the bloody... There is, here's the rules. It's, it's so good. It's got two pages. Right, here's an Iron Demon. It's a Strength 8, Toughness 7, 7 Wound, Heavy Chariot, basically. It's got a 5-inch move, which sounds terrible, right? However, uh, you can move stuff with steam carriages. In fact, has he upgraded any of his to have steam carriages? Uh, um, no. No, he's just, he's just got some... Okay, so he hasn't got a land train. Uh... It does thunder stomps, basically. Um, yeah, and it, it does the same as a steam tank. So you can essentially add a D6 and uh, roll a D6 and add that to its movement, right? It doesn't get swift stride. <laughs> but it does have D6 plus 1. Strength 8, AP 2, Impact Hits, because it's a heavy chariot, and it does do D3 plus 1, Strength 8, AP 2, uh, Stomp Attacks, uh, which is just horrible. Uh, it's just, it's so good. It's so good. Uh, oh, yeah, and you can, you can go for Skullcracker, so it does 2D6 plus 2 Impact Hits with Armor Bane 1. Remembering it's Impact Hits are already AP 2, so... You could be rolling some AP3, Arm and Bane. Uh, I don't think he's actually done that with any of them. But I mean, and they're unbreakable as well. So you just can't, once they get into combat, they just sit there. So, you know. <coughs> Pardon me. There's another one coming. <coughs> Pardon me. So we've got Hobgoblin Khan and some Hobgoblin Wolf Riders. who have got Feign Flight, which I think is one of the best abilities in the game because you can charge them, they can run away and automatically rally, which means they get to... Um, they've got Fire and Flee as well. These are Hobgoblin Wolf Riders are some of the best fast cavalry in the game, hands down. So I'm not surprised he's got some. Um, yes, 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 yes. Oh, yeah, and they've also, I think they've got evasive as well, haven't they? Yeah, flat evasive. So, basically what that means is if they get shot at, they can make a fall back in good order. Which is brilliant. Um, so, yeah, that's a really good list. Uh, well done, Matt McDonald, for winning. Commiserations to Kevin for just getting pipped to the post. Who did you draw with? It's Tim Vass. It's Tim's fault. It's Tim's fault you didn't win. From Mordian Glory. Did he just out cannon you? Is that what happened? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it when a quick prediction works out to be true. Okay. <laughs> just uh, artillery and then troops just sort of dying in the middle as artillery do all their stuff. Right. And we have square based GT3 where. Oh, come on. One of the things I like about Rob is he leaves the placings available all the time so you can just check what you're doing. Like, there's no secret. Oh, I wonder who's got... Like, just, you know, get let people get on with it. Another cool thing about this tournament is nobody went 5-0. James Ramsey came close. He drew his fourth game against Mark. 
who, if you see my other videos, I played Mark. Mark's an absolute. He is a beast of a player. Like he's he's a really good player. His re, his tournament game is excellent. He's uh, his banter is brilliant, and um, he knows exactly what he's doing. Right, and uh, massive respect for Mark. Uh, uh, but you you. Yeah. <laughs> Massive respect for Mark. He's uh you know, he's he's been doing this a while and he's a play tester, so but James ended up winning, so we'll have a look at his list. I really want to talk about Mark's list as well because I played against it so I can tell you a little bit about how it works. Uh and it's it's just really good. One of the thing one of the mistakes I made against Mark is something I realised later. Uh, and then we'll have a look at Dan Moody with his Orc and Goblins who nearly lost all, and Shane with his vampires, who nearly lost all of them. Okay, so um, this is, let's look at the bottom places first. So Shane, he had vampires. That's his problem. As soon as you see the word vampire in a vampire counts list, you know it's not going to be very good. Uh, vampire counts that work are necromancer heavy. Vampire counts that have vampires in aren't very good lists. It's just how they play, annoyingly. Uh, that's just... Uh, sadly how they work they're not very they're not very good at combat what they are good at is screaming at you and if you go heavy on the uh, wailing dirge then you're going to do very well and if you don't you're going to struggle and that's fundamentally where vampire counts are at the moment and because they're unsupported that's where they're going to be for the next forever um, and because we've already got soul blight in aos they're not going to support vampire counts forever and ever and ever amen so he's got some Vargeist, some Terror Terrorgeist are good. Um, Vargeist are okay. Warriors, Black Knights, Direwolves. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's it, it, it would it's cool. I bet it looks great on the tabletop. I bet it's fun to play with, but I bet it's really disappointingly rubbish. Um, yeah, there's not there's not much I can really say about this. It looks like a pretty standard like vampire list of old and. It's just going to get smashed to pieces at a tournament, I'm afraid. Um, which is a real shame, because, you know, it's cool, but not good. Um, and then Dan Moody, who came with Orc and Goblins, he's got a Black Ock War Boss and a Wyvern, Trollhide. That looks solid. Decent Dragon. And then he's got a uh, Night Goblin War Boss. Okay. Uh, you know for like 190 points you can take a level 4 Wizard, so I'm not sure what that's all for. Uh, and then we've got a big boss, which is a BSB. Okay, Night Goblin Oblom. Okay. Now, if he doesn't have three packs of Night Goblins, and if he does have three packs of Night Goblins, sorry, and has the requisite nine um, fanatics, I'm going to be massively surprised. He's got six fanatics. Like, ah, oh, Mangler Squigs. Yeah, I told you there's something wrong with them. Like, you see them at lists at the top, you see them at lists with the bottom. I don't think they really do much. Like, I think they're, they're massively swingy. They're either going to be massively impactful or just totally useless and then just get charged and killed for... You know, I, I sense that you're basically giving away 200 points to your opponent with those. Um, snotling pump wagons are... I, I mean, they're cool. <laughs> they're lovely models, but... Ugh, they're like the worst chariot ever. Like, they don't do anything. Um... Squig Hopper mobs, they're good for protecting stuff, but Squig Herds are just not very good. Again, they're cool, but they just don't they don't really do kind of they don't they're really good in combat, but you also really want them to lose combat by a lot and break and then do lots of what you might call mortal wounds. So you know, you really want them to Yeah, that they don't they they don't do the job that you want them to do really. They they do two jobs, but if they do one job, they can't do the other. And you know, I guess for the points, mate. I don't know. He's got two units of night goblins with spears and netters. Like I thought that was six fanatics. I thought that would be quite good. What did he come up against that he didn't? The, the fanatics didn't do anything. Dan Moody played Ryan Dell first off. Ryan Dell had Bretonia. Bretonia should struggle with that. Ewan. Oh, yeah, okay. He, he would have lost to Ewan, definitely. Because the tanks would have just rolled over the Fanatics and not cared. 
Um, yeah. Oh, then he played Mark. Yeah, unlucky really because they don't really care about fanatics because the high toughness. And then Shane. This is the one he drew, and this is the other list we had a look at. That you know, it's a, it's a cool sick ed list but not not very good and then he played andy last who uh andy was just having a terrible second day <laughs> like nothing seemed to go right for him but again yeah the this doesn't really care much about the fanatics like he's got enough shooting that he can just you know do a lot of shooting damage to units and panic stuff off so he's got enough he's got enough there to deal with uh with your with your war boss as well but that last game, I sense, would have been a bit tighter than that result might have suggested. But yeah, oh no, it was. It was quite tight because he got an eight. So that basically means that um, Andy won by like 500 points. So it's a 500 point margin between the two. Cool. So that's that. Those are the ones that aren't great. Okay, Mark's list. Now, I have no idea how he's done this, but there must be other things. But when he played against me, this had seven attacks, strength seven, AP two, which was rather insane. Um, uh, and it had like a two up save, five up ward or something. So it was just, it was just really, really good. Um, Then he had a great Bray Shaman that, you know, did quite well. It's got the Hag Tree Fetish, so he can re-roll. Um, he can re-roll Wound Rolls. Uh, I haven't got my Evils book up yet. Yeah, he can re-roll Wound Rolls uh, on Magic Missiles, which is excellent because... Where is it? The Beastman's thing is this thing called Vile Tide. 5d6 strength, 1 hits, no armor save. So if you can re-roll that, it's 5d6, you know, you roll, you know, 5d6. You're expecting, like, about sort of 17, and then you get to re-roll. So you get to roll that almost twice. Uh, so you're probably going to get 5 or 6 wounds with no armor save, um, which is what you did. Um... Uh, and then you've got a Centigore Chieftain with some Centigore to kind of come on a bit later. Do a bit of damage from ambushing. Uh, the Wargall with Slug... Slug Skin, I think, is a bit OP because it uh, confers, like, a minus one to hit to the entire unit you're in, which, basically, if you put the Wargall and the Doom Bull in a unit of Ungors, which is what he's got, this 20 Ungor Horde. You've got an Ungor Herd, sorry, that's minus one to hit in combat, You've got a war gore that's actually pretty tough. Like, the toughness five. Like, they're tougher than dwarves. It's just really weird. Uh, and then Doom Bull, um, which is also horrible to kill. You just end up with this really nasty brick. And then he's got tons and tons of... And then basically the gores go around as chaff, trying to lure people in. So then the tusk gores and the razor gores can counter charge. He's also got harpies for flapping around and like sitting behind your units before he makes you fall back in good order into them. So that then you have to go through his his models and potentially lose a load. And then um, he's got the dragon ogres, which you know are quite punchy and can do quite a bit of damage. So overall, it's a it's a super 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 good list. The reason one of the reasons I lost against it is because I thought all the bloody chariots had swift stride. I didn't know that they didn't. I just assumed that because it's like a cavalry thing, they've obviously must have swift stride. Turns out that's not that's not true at all. So I could have been a bit more aggressive with positioning against them, but you know, hey ho, you 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 learn, don't you? You learn. Uh, right. Uh, and to be fair, my list was fast enough that I could have just essentially just gone all the way round round flank one round one flank, killing off all the chariots, and I could have gone round the other, killing off all the others, and then met his big stuff in the middle later on which is what i should have done had i known they didn't have swift stride but you know whatever um <coughs> you learn don't you 
outflank him rather than let him outflank you because I was quicker than him. Anyway, so that's what happened. Uh, and that was that. This is very, very good. Well done, Mark. Great opponent. Anyway, Liam got second with High Elves. So High Elves haven't been doing very well. So uh, he's got a prince on a dragon, obviously, with all the obvious things like five at ward, five at ward, five at regen, two up save. No, 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 no. Same. He's got the High Elf prince. Uh, he's got an Archmage level 4, Ruby Ring of Ruin. <laughs> um, so he's got the char- He's got the standard High Elf characters. He hasn't got a BSB. Neither did Abade. And I think Abade not having a BSB is why he lost. So I think, you know, BSBs are... Although they are expensive for High Elves, they're probably worth it because the way that this loses combat is through combat res. You don't want to accidentally roll high and it bugger off, which is what happened, which is basically how you lose the game because then the rest of it isn't that good. <coughs> so he's got a couple of Chaffee Archer units uh, and some spears. They're probably, presumably, yeah, they're detachments to go to the either side of the spears. Um, that's perfectly sensible, and I would argue better than um, better than having a big block of like twenty five leather and sea guard. He's then got some silver helms. I like silver helms because I think they've got utility. They can do something. Uh, you know, they can break stuff in combat. Um, yeah, they are reasonably effective, and they do have lances, so they're not terrible. Um, they're pretty decent, sort of medium heavy cavalry. Then you've got Sword Masters of Hearth, which are great. He's given them drilled, obviously. Um, what laws he gone for? He's gone for high magic. Yeah, so he's not gone for. Yeah, he's gone for high magic, which I think is sensible because high magic is possibly the best. Um, he's got some white lions. I really like white lions, so I'm glad they've done well. He's then got an Eagle Claw Bolt Thrower, which will have missed every single turn, but anyway, it's there. And then he's got a couple of Great Eagles. You know, Great Eagles are quite useful, actually. Uh, Abade had one, which he ended up, I ended up using to whip beat him with, really, in the end, because he kind of used it to block something, but then he didn't. So, yeah. But that's a, that's a good list, so well done. James, well done for winning. He's, oh, God, bloody necromancers. Okay, so James has also gone for screaming stuff off the table. Oh, this is, yeah, he drew with Mark. So, and Mark drew with him because Mark didn't commit to anything. Because Mark was basically like, well, as soon as I start charging into this block of zombies that y- y- you're resurrecting from turn one, to be honest, you you can make them essentially turn one, you can start to add models to them, right? So, but as soon as you start charging them, you start losing models and they don't. And then as soon as you hit them with anything, this, 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 cast a load of negative leadership debuffs on the unit that's gone into combat with the zombies, right? This one can make it minus three, minus three, and then you've got four screams, which are another minus two each, against your unit so basically what you're at is minus eight to your leadership and then you roll 2d6 so even if your leadership let's say nine you're now leadership one because that's the minimum uh you then roll 2d6 let's say seven and what and you the difference between your modified leadership and the roll is how many wounds you suffer no armor saves no regen so six wounds just horrible times four 24 wounds like that just kills any unit pretty much so you know, you've got to go into combat and kill this massive block of zombies. And if you don't, these are going to just pop out and scream at you. Equally, though, what would have probably happened is James knows that as soon as he starts moving something forwards, then on comes the centaurs, centigors, and they charge one of these necromancers in the back and probably kill it. Um... And he's got these blood knights that can't really do their job, but they're there to, essentially, if people hold off, the blood knights can go for... But, I mean, he wouldn't have sent the blood knights forwards anyway because the blood knights will be going forwards into screens of, you know... into So I'd imagine there'd be, like, screens of uh, 
skirmishers of gauze in the middle of the field. If the zombies or the blood knights go forward, there's about six chariots that will smash into whatever it is. And even like 40 zombies would likely take, I don't know, 20, 30 casualties to um, to a load of chariots being smashed into it. So, and then at that point, one, one person's won. But yeah, so I can see that as being a super cagey, boring game. But anyway, uh, J- James has got a great list. I bet it was horrible to play against. <laughs> um, everybody looking at it really like, oh God, no, not this. <laughs> but okay, cool. Well, it's a challenge. I can see if I can beat it. Um, so that's that. Uh, and that's uh, that was square based. And I'll show you where that was. Uh, that was at Lower Parliament Street, NG11. Nugga one, one, uh. uh. No, that's wrong. That's uh, that's totally wrong. What? Oh, it's not gone for the one. Uh. That's right. Yes, yeah, just in the road from Saracen's Cafe. So where's the where's the it's kind of it's yeah it's kind of here. Uh, see if the little man can help us have a look at this. Yeah. So if you're ever going, it's this building here. That's that's the door into it. I have no idea what the building actually is. There's some tables downstairs. There's uh, eight tables upstairs. There's four tables downstairs. Uh, this used to be like a gaming store. It's not anymore. There's a load of weird paths that go off all over the place around this building. It's such a weird little building. I tend to park here, which is 30 quid for all day, which is quite expensive, but it's it's incredibly handy. I understand there is much cheaper parking elsewhere. That's an ice rink, if you get bored of Warhammer and fancy doing that instead. Uh, there are loads of really nice places to eat down here um which is pretty cool this bit tends to be full of stalls of like vegan food and then down there on the on the back here is a really nice greasy spoon style cafe where you can get black pudding if you're not vegan so it's a really nice area or there's a subway that rob will tell you not to go to because he thinks that subway is cake because of the high sugar content of the of the of the bread however it's not cake because just because something's got a lot of sugar in doesn't make it cake um <laughs> that's not it's not how that works oh that's was that ah that's interesting time warp look at that <laughs> so if we move from here to here on the map Oh, anyway, shut up, Dan. Right, so that was Square Base GT3. Uh, congratulations to... Um, was it James? James, I didn't get to talk to James in the end at all because uh, we just sort of passed each other on the day and uh, he had to race off for a train. So he basically went upstairs, collected his award and then dashed off to the train before any other awards had been, ha- had been handed out. Uh, Mark Waldman got the... Um, got the player's player award for like combination of best army best player and coolest army and all that and uh obeyed no not obeyed i'm obsessed with obeyed i really liked him i thought he was a really nice guy he's a lawyer as well which is quite cool and so we had some really decent conversations about how they've written the book um uh kevin that was it kevin got best player because he brought skaven and he's a really nice bloke uh yeah really funny the second day it was really windy and we stood outside and the wind was like blowing a gale and he's got long hair and long beard and he's like sort of facing into the wind it's like i can't turn around i can't move my face because look and then <laughs> <loads of it. laughs> which was which was quite funny anyway cool i've waffled on uh lots i hope that's been oh no i haven't finished yet have i because where's the meta stand at the moment uh what are the changes uh righty ho let's add uh how do i add i can't remember how to add the time thing time 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 timeline timeline cool 
Let's have a timeline. So here we were. So Dark Elves, Tomb Kings, and so I'll explain it. So Dark Elves, Tomb Kings, uh, Demons, interestingly, doing quite well. And then they've ended up with a result at the bottom, which should have sorted them out a little bit. Uh, let's have April as way as well. Cool. So Demons have dropped down a little bit because they've got a few more results. And this is exactly why I was saying that small numbers of results don't really make that much difference because a few results will drag factions down and about. So if this scores less than about 30, expect it to move. Like This isn't going to be its final. 30, you get reasonably reliable. If the results are about 500, then we'd know that they're pretty representative of the global meta, but we're a ways away from that right now. Um, and remember, this is a longitudinal study, so there's actually loads and loads of data points. So the data is never likely to be massively correct because stuff changes over time. Any hoot. Um, the Team King seem to be reliably good, reliably good at winning tournaments. Just to explain these, this data over here, this is essentially uh, uh, this is a, a statistical manner in which to split up the um, the win percentage into three categories. So we, we're essentially drawing three different populations of data. So Wood Elves upwards have got a higher than normal win percentage. Uh, Bretonia through Dwarf and Mountain Holds have a normal win, percent win percentage. And these Orcs and Goblins and Lower have a lower than normal win percentage. Um, this figure is essentially where they finish in tournaments. So Kingdom of Bretonia have a normal win percentage, but they finish in tournaments higher than that, which suggests they don't lose by a lot or they win by quite a lot when they do win. Um, same with Warriors of Chaos. So they're quite good at finishing high in tournaments, but their win percentage isn't great. So that means they, generally speaking, either don't lose by a lot or win by a large margin or both. Um, which somebody pointed out last week, and I thought, I'm an idiot. <laughs> They're absolutely right. Worryingly, uh, Orc and Goblins, Tribes... Now, Ogre Kingdoms had three reds last time. They've come back to a red, an amber, and a red. So they're pretty, they're pretty much bottom of the meta in terms of win percentage and in terms of where they finish in tournaments. They're pretty terrible at that. However, they've got a normal level of variability. So that shows that essentially they're starting to get a bit better. Skaven <coughs> and Orcan Goblins are the current... Uh, these factions are doing really badly. Skaven, again, there's not very many results. So this could change quite dramatically with a couple of good results. Uh, Orcan Goblin Tribes, however, there's a lot of results and they're still doing quite badly overall. Again, I think it's probably because Orc players play quite thematically in general rather than competitively. But notably, they don't have something like a like a, a Mega Dragon that they can take like almost every other faction. So they're, 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 Orc and Go Orcs and Goblins are in a pretty difficult spot at the moment. But they've just got a new book, so let's see what that does. Uh, the three perfectly average factions are Demons, Chaos Dwarfs, and High Elves. Again, Chaos Dwarfs and Demons don't have that many results, so again, the data, you can't really draw a lot of conclusions from it, although High Elves seem to be perfectly average, which is pretty good. In terms of overall looking at the meta, we want these populations, these three populations, to be around about the same in terms of number. That just shows that the results are fairly evenly spread and that victories aren't being clustered in like one or and losses aren't being clustered in one or more. Ideally, what you'd see here is this being a range of something like 40 to 60 percent and these being quite evenly spread out. The factions at the bottom are 40% and below in terms of win rate um, and the factions. Uh, now, the other th thing is that it's not going to be 40 to 60. It's probably actually 40 to 55, thinking about it, because um, um, because draws occur, which means having a 50% win rate for every faction is not possible because draws occur. 
So it's always going to be slightly lower than that. <coughs> this standard deviation figure, what that means is this plus or minus this gives you the normal result for a faction. So, for instance, a Lisbon player at a tournament will be expected to win, a normal Lisbon player will be expected to win somewhere between 92 and 28% of their games. Again, there's not enough players for that, that for those um, um, parametric stats, parametric tests to be particularly useful. However, for Bretonia, we're getting to a point where they might be. So your average, your normal result for a Bretonia player is somewhere between 26 to 74% in terms of a win percentage for a Bretonian. And these parametric tests only become sort of reliable, not very, but sort of reliable once you get to about 30 results. So we're starting to see that here with with a few factions, Empire are nearly up there, but Orcs and Goblins, a normal result for them is basically between 8 to 72%. So it's pretty normal that a five-game tournament for Orcs to win zero games. Or maybe just draw one. That's a pretty normal result. And that's not a good statistic. Skaven is pretty normal for them to win 0% at a tournament. Again, not a good statistic. Although, not a lot of results. So probably not a reliable statistic. <coughs> but what we can say is from this number, we're getting to a point at which we can start to draw generalizations across the whole data, just not across factions. And we'll start to do that a bit later on when we start to look at things like this but uh, essentially we can start to compare these and see well actually does the um is yeah well, i'll talk about that later when i've done some more tests because i haven't actually done it yet um i haven't started playing around with that yet but yeah so that's the that's the matter at the moment uh kemri are reliably doing pretty well which is interesting I think a lot of the a lot of the Camry list, just in case you're thinking of doing it, is a dragon with the reroll wounds thing on it, or etc. Those two seem to be quite popular. But Camry, they've got a lot of options, so there's a lot to do in there. Uh, Beastmen are unreliable, but still very good. So they're, they're Beastmen and Camry and Dark Elves and Wood Elves, if you want to go for something that's top-ish of the meta-ish at the moment, then they're your options. But yeah. Uh, Thanks for listening. If you've got this far in the video, um, uh, it would be nice if you could press the subscribe button uh, uh, if this you feel this video has earned it. And if you like the video, there's a, there's a button for that. Uh, and if not, I shall see you around soon. So, toodaloo.